Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word. We are in Exodus chapter 4, and I know last couple videos we've taken a little break, and I appreciate your patience with that. Uh, but as we continue on in our adventure of God's Word, uh, being able to see who God is, how much He is in charge, how much is in His hands, but also how much He loves His people, how much He loves His creation. So much that he's heard the cries of the Israelites in Egypt after generation upon generation of that oppression. He says, those are my people. I've heard their cry, and I'm going to bring about their freedom. I'm going to rescue them, but he's going to do it in a particular way uh, that absolutely foreshadows what he's going to do for all of creation as he gives them freedom and rescue through Christ. He does it through a man named Moses. Exodus chapter 3, as he calls him to the burning bush, as he tells, he tells him who I am, and being able to say that now go, free my people from Egypt. You're going to be the vessel that I use. I could do it in all sorts of different ways, but I'm going to use it in a particular way, and it's going to be you, Moses. And here's the promise. You're going to go to, is, go to Egypt. You're going to bring my people out of Egypt with my mighty hand but also with the plunder of Egypt as well. I will provide for you. With all these promises, with all of this futuristic understanding for Moses, Moses questions, Moses doubts, and that's why we can resonate with Moses, probably one of the most characters in and amongst the scriptures, that what God has put in place, his plan, his future, his provision, there's a lot of times we doubt or we question and we actually even say, do that for somebody else. <laughs> Moses has these signs. Moses has these doubts. Moses has these answers. Moses finally goes. But it takes God's push. It takes God's guidance. It takes God's provision, once again, for Moses in his doubts. Chapter 4 of Exodus Let's read together. Verse 1 says, Moses answered, What if they don't, do not believe me or listen to me and say, The Lord did not appear to you? I mean, he's had that experience, but he's just going to be the testimony of God. But what if they don't believe that, he's saying? Then the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? A staff, Moses replied. The Lord said, Throw it on the ground. Moses threw, threw it on the ground, and it became a snake, and he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out and took hold of the snake, and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. Then the Lord said, Put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand into his cloak, and when he took it out, it was leprous, like snow. Now put it back into your cloak, he said. So Moses put his hand back into his cloak. And when he took it out, it was restored, like the rest of his flesh. Then the Lord said, If they do not believe you or pay attention to the first miraculous sign, they may believe the second. But if they do not believe these two signs or listen to you, take some water from the Nile and pour it on the ground and on the dry ground. The water you take from the river will become blood on the ground. Moses said to the Lord, O oh Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. <laughs> I smile at that because he immediately leaped towards it. Hey, I'm going to provide you with uh, signs. I'm going to provide you with miracles. I'm going to provide you with the provision that is needed for them to believe. Right? It, it was all on account of God. And Moses took that in, and he, and he was a part of that, of those signs and of those provisions and of those promises. But as he took that in, he's saying, well, he's still going to use me. And I don't know if I really want him to use me. Full of doubt, full of, I don't want to go back to Egypt. Look what I did. So he makes excuses. And I say excuses because maybe you've ventured in this before. Where was Moses raised? In the most educational system in all the world. Egypt. 
the height of Egypt. I mean, Alexandria, Egypt, we still see it as the library of the world. You get to see within Ramses and the building of the, uh, of, uh, of the nation, of the kingdom of Egypt, Moses was a part of that. He was the prince. He, he looked on that right up front. He is going to have the best. But yet, as God calls him, as God promises him, him, all of a sudden, he steeps back into not being worthy, not wanting to be the one that God has chosen. So verse 11 said, the Lord said to him, who gave man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? Who gives him sight or makes him blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. It's not on you, Moses. Yes, I have chosen you for this purpose, but you will not be alone. I'll give you these signs, but I'll even give you my own presence. I will teach you. I will speak for you. But Moses said, oh Lord, please send someone else to do it. He's come to his end of being able to try to manipulate in a way that it's not going to be him. Just, you know what? I'm just going to give you a plain and simple. I don't want to go. Please send somebody else. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses. And he said, what about your brother, Aaron the Levite? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you. And his heart will be glad when he sees you. Did you catch that? He is already on his way. God already knew the doubts and the fears of Moses and he well provided verse 15 you shall speak to him and put words in his mouth I will help both of you speak and will teach you what to do he will speak to the people for you and it will be as if he were your mouth and as if you were God to him but take this staff in your hand so you can perform miraculous signs with it. Coming back to the beginning of the provision. What's that in your hand? It's a staff. Okay, I'll use that staff. Who's this standing before me? Moses. Okay, I'm going to use Moses. Even in his doubts and fears. Even what he thinks is his in, in, uh, uh, incompatibility. <laughs> I'm not even sure what that word uh, should be right there. But what he doesn't see as worthy enough to be able to take this purpose on. God makes it worthy. God walks with him. So verse 18, then Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, let me go back to my own people in Egypt to see if any of them are still alive. Jethro said, go, and I wish you well. Another provision of God, Moses was tending his flock, was his shepherd, was something he counted on for his family and his provision of his family. And immediately Jethro, knowing that this was the call of God, said, Go, and I wish you well. Now the Lord's had said to Moses and Midian, Go back to Egypt, for all the men who wanted to kill you are dead. So Moses took his wife and sons, put them on a donkey, and started back to Egypt. Family and mission. It speaks to me a lot. Of being able to know a lot of, I know a lot of people view me in this role of, of pastor and view me in this video of being able to walk with God's word with them or preaching uh, from up front or teaching with st studies or being able to lead within the church and the school it takes a family pray for my family and uh, it's a family in mission and Moses took the staff of God in his hand the Lord said to Moses, when you return to Egypt so that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders I have given you, the power to do, but I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. Whoa, whoa, whoa wait a second. <laughs> that wasn't a part of the plan. Oh, it's a part of God's plan. He's going to harden Pharaoh's heart. And we're going to see, we're going to see the provision. We're going to see just the power of God over the greatest power in the world so that he will not let the people go. Verse 22, Then say to Pharaoh, This is what the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn son. And I told you, let my son go, so he may worship me. But you refuse to let him go, so I will kill your firstborn son. He already 
provides the future. He already understands what is going to take place because he has the plan, and he's going to already look to that 10th plague, killing of his firstborn son. At a lodging place on the way, verse 24, the Lord met Moses and was about to kill him. What? What? God is always a God of grace. Doesn't seem like that here, but was about to kill him. But Sipporah took a flint knife, cut off her son's foreskin, and touched Moses' feet with it. Surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me, she said. So the, so the Lord let him alone. At that time, she said bridegroom of blood, referring to circumcision. The covenant of God with his people, reminding God of his covenant with his people. And this is how they went about it. Gruesome. Not understanding of our society right now. But reminding God of his covenant with his people. Even in the belly aching, even in the distance that we walk from God. God reminding, remembering his covenant with his people. The Lord said to Aaron, Go into the desert to meet Moses. So he met Moses at the mountain of God and kissed him. Then Moses told Aaron everything the Lord had sent him to say, and also about all the miraculous signs he had commanded him to perform. Moses and Aaron brought together all the elders of the Israelites, and Aaron told them everything the Lord had said to Moses. He also performed the signs before the people, and they believed. And when they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshipped. See what their sight was? They heard, they saw, they believed, they worshipped. We too, I pray, have, seen, have heard the gospel. We've seen the love of God in action through the church, through the gospel. We believe that God is a God who provides, that God is a God who is near, that God is a God who rescues and may we worship him this day because of what we've heard of our God, what we've seen from our God, what we believe of our God. May we worship him and give him thanks this day for he is good all the time. Have a blessed day.